Well, hello, my friends. It's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at this goodness. Here are the supplies that we'll be using today. So today's project, I'm starting on an 11 by 14 MDF board that I have gessoed, and I have cut out just some random, um, I've actually torn out random bits of script paper, and I'm using them as texture. And so I'm laying the top pieces down um, like um, you would see plaster peeling or old wallpaper peeling. And then in the middle there where the table is going to be, I'm laying them um, horizontally so that it looks like it'll give me texture like wood, like a wood table. And then the very front is where my tiles are going to go, tiles that you would see around the table. And so I'm using um, Nova Colors uh, Matte Gel and I have really learned to enjoy or like their the matte gel and their gesso and their texture paste as well. So um, you'll have to give those a try. So I've got everything down and now I'm just starting to build the, the still life here and kind of create my depth and kind of where I'm going. So I've got, I used Prussian blue, no actually I used um, indigo blue from Lucas Paint. The color I'm using here for the table is um, burnt umber. And then I'll use a little bit of raw umber. I kind of mix the two together because I want some warm and some cool colors. Burnt umber is more warm. Raw umber is more cool. And I'm just trying to get that kind of layout so you see the front of the table and then the table kind of will disappear into the background. Um, and you can see already the papers, how they've kind of laid down some texture, kind of like wood. I'm so pleased with how every everything turned out in this piece. So I've watered my paint down and just kind of pulled it back to give some highlight, low light kind of shadow. And then I'll, of course, add to it. Add a little, added a little bit of raw umber over the top of that bottom blue. And when I pulled it up, it pulled up all the color. And then I was kind of like, oh, I like that. I liked how the blue kind of outlined the area. So I added a little bit more raw umber and a little bit more of that um, indigo blue and then decided to just leave it alone and let it dry. So I'm building up my layers for the background here and I'm doing it real messily and just trying to get that kind of plaster wall feeling. And I'm using um, Lucas Paints in raw umber. I'm using a gray and, and a couple of uh, gray colors from Deco Art um, Americana paints. And of course, all of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog will be down below in the YouTube description box. So as I put my layers on, I just kind of pull it back and really create this really kind of grungy feel. I wanted it to be like this old, I, I envisioned this old building um, in Spain because um, I've got my Spanish tiles and um, kind of a quiet, dark, by the fire kind of feeling, very vintage, old. Um, that's kind of what I had in my head. So I'm layering the grays, the, the um, raw umber and black back and forth. And you can see each time I pull up a layer, it kind of pulls up some of the under layer and it's perfect. It's perfect that way. And those papers are showing through and adding this really interesting texture to the background. And so I'm just going to kind of continue to layer her till I get that feeling that I'm looking for. I really wanted it to be shadowy and moody and um, just like, um, it's lit by the fire or candlelight or something like that. And so I'm just gonna continue to layer here and just kind of pull up. I got some paint in the middle there. And so I tried to kind of fix it a little bit and I didn't like what was happening. So I dipped my rag in some water and it pulled up all the paint. But look at how gorgeous. Everything happens for a reason, all the happy accidents. It looks like there was maybe a fire or something like that. Like it's this old, um, old building wall and look at how gorgeous that looks. When it happened, I was like, oh, hallelujah, it is awesome. And so I'm just playing and playing and just having so much fun. 
So now that the paint's dried at the bottom, I'm going to add my Spanish tile element. Um, I wanted that to look like the front of the table that had tile around the edge that you would see in, you know, maybe some Spanish home or something like that. And so now I'm adding, I'm starting to add my highlights and really starting to develop. So light is coming from the front and I really wanted to work on light coming from the front instead of maybe the back or the side because my shadowing is different. So the light source is front and so I'm going to work on adding my, my shadow coming from the front and moving backwards. And so I will just kind of begin to add all of the different layers of shadow. Um, and then once I've kind of got that down, I, I want to put my elements in so then I can further develop the shadow and the piece. So I've got the tin bucket and the farmhouse pitcher. And of course, all of the stencils that I use um, today will be on sale in the shop for you this week. So I use gesso to get the initial outline of each um, stencil for the bucket and the, and the pitcher. And now for the pitcher, I'm using some of that Nova color and it's called texture paste and it is awesome. It's white, it dries white, white, which a lot of texture pastes don't. And so um, I'm really pleased with it. So for my bucket, I wanted it to look metal. And for all the work that I did with, I'm using Arteza's bronze, metallic, silver, and then a pearl. And for all the work that I did for the bucket, it didn't really show up. And so I might not do this again the next time, but it was worth the, the effort and the try this time. You, st you can still see the shimmer, which is kind of neat, but um, it really, it didn't, didn't do what I wanted it to do. And I maybe should have tried to make it a little bit more grungy, but I needed that contrast between the table and the bucket. And so I had to add some gesso to it, which took the shine and the shimmer away from the metallic. So anyway, everything happens for a reason. So I'm just filling in my bucket and adding all of my elements, my highlights, and again, using all the same paints that I had used for the backgrounds with the exception of the metallics from Arteza. Um, adding some, again, some um, dimension and some shadow and highlight to each piece. And then of course, we'll develop that even more. So I wanted I wanted to, to bring in some teal, but I wanted it to be subtle. And, I, and shadow often shows up as a blue, especially if there's a fire or something like that. There's kind of a blue hue to um, your shadow. And so that's part of the reason why I added the teal. One, because I like it. And maybe I was thinking that maybe it was a teal pitcher at one time and it had worn off. Um, but the blue actually gives a great shadow and um, an interesting tint to something without it being too dramatic. Um, but I'm just kind of um, adding my color here. And I know that I'm covering up my texture but wait till you see when I put the um, acrylic ink on there so you can see I'm putting on my gesso now so I've got my pictures and my my base elements down and I'm going to now begin to add my um, florals and things like that so I started adding my leaves and then I realized well I don't really have a plan <laughs> I, I kind of need to have a plan here <laughs> so I got out my charcoal pencil and decided to draw my stems and you know make my my plan of where I was going to go and I'm just using a general circle pencil in soft and then I will just continue to stencil out my leaves and I'm using Lucas acrylic paints in three different fall colors and again those fall colors will be listed on the blog and you will notice that for the leaves, I'm only using the top portion of each um, leaf part. Um, I love using stencils because you can make them exactly what you want. So I only use the tiny little bit of the tip of a, of a leaf and it works perfectly. So now that I've got my leaves in, I'm going to get the base part of my cotton stems down and I'm using gesso to get the shape. And then of course I'll come back in and fill it in. 
And again, I'm using this stencil. I don't use the whole part of the stems. I only use, you know, a certain few of the stems of the cotton stem. Um, and again, just customizing and using your stencil as a guide and being able to uh, work with just certain parts of the stencil really makes it incredibly versatile. So filling in my, um, my cotton stems and adding the parts, all the parts to it. So I just had so much fun with this piece. It was part of my inspiration and I know there's no words on it, but I hope you stick around for the conversation at the end because I share what inspired this and why I decided to create this. And um, it's a good, it's a good um, quick story of my inspiration for this piece. So now that I've gotten my cotton stems in, I'm using the Mums stencil. And um, you know how moms just kind of create this dome effect of flowers. And so I was, that was my goal is to kind of create that bucket of moms kind of feel. And using again, the same colors that I used in the leaves um, for the, in the picture, um, I'm using for the flowers and the leaves for the moms bucket. And again, I'm only using portions of the stencil I don't use the whole flower, I use just the middle portion of the, or just a side portion of the stencil, and it works perfectly. I realized I wanted to add a few more leaves and kind of extend that branch out a little bit more and make it a little bit more dramatic. And as you progress through your piece, that often happens where you see something, you're like, oh, it needs something more. And so don't be afraid to add or subtract as you develop because you see things differently as you add color and different things like that. So now that we've got um, most of the color down, um, the vase was just too, too pristine and I knew I wanted it to be grungy and good. And so this is, I used Liquitex Transparent Raw Umber and as soon as I laid that acrylic down, all that texture showed up. It is so beautiful. And I'm trying to be really careful to kind of let it just sit there in its spot um, without taking, without being too dark and too grungy um, and to just let it dry. And it was so pretty. So now that we've got some of that color on that, that vase and the grungy ink and everything, I'm going to bring more of that blue back in and I'm going to layer it. I've got the, the um, kind of like a cerulean blue and I'm going to layer it with some um, umber and some brown and some gray so that it is that kind of blue light shadow and I love, love the color. I'm using a few new soft pastels that will be listed on the blog and I'm going to be doing a whole um, video and workshop on pastels coming up. So be looking for that. But I'm just going to be adding all of the finishing touches, all of the shading and really working on um, adding depth to my piece. To the leaves and everything, I'm doing a really soft, kind of sketchy outline. And then I will, I will, you know, kind of rub and shade in some of the intersections and some of the areas where I want there to be more shadow, where um, maybe the leaves are behind or, or getting some shadow. Um, but really trying to create this mood and, and um, depth with the shading in this piece. And I'll use my charcoal pencil and my soft pastels for that. I will also use my soft pastels for highlights and lowlights. And I'll bring the mum, the mums together as well. You'll see in just a minute. But I'm just adding more of the soft lines and different things like that around the leaves. 
So here's where I start adding some depth and dimension and really kind of soften that the mum so that it doesn't look, you know, completely stenciled. You still still see the petal shapes and all of that, but I'm softening it up with all of my wonderful new colors in my soft pastels. And um, I kind of damped, dampened my rag and then kind of touched up um, over the soft pastels and picked up some of that so that it wasn't so um, strong and uh, made it a little bit more uneven. And then I'm coming back with my charcoal pencil to just kind of highlight here and there some of the petals. And then again, some loose um, charcoal pencil lines around the outside. Then I'll highlight my leaves here as well. So now I'm working on kind of that light hitting the corner of that table and more of the shading. Um, really working on trying to develop that kind of shadow to where you see the table edge but you don't really see it and looking at okay if, if the lights coming from you know this corner where where would I see light and where would I see dark where would there naturally be some shadow So I will continue to fuss with this a little bit more and add additional shading and depth and all of those kinds of wonderful things. Add some shading around the edges and that is pretty much it, my friends. Um, I just had so much fun with this. This was just my happy place and I share with you um, what made me create this at the end of the video. So I hope you stick around for that conversation. Again, all the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. If you liked today's project, subscribe and like and share and all those wonderful things. And um, thank you so much for being here and I will see you next week. Well, hello my friends. Happy Sunday to you. This makes my heart happy. So, so very happy. Oh my goodness. Um, so, really quick, I went over everything in the video. Um, the, all the stencils that I use today, the fall leaves, the um, cotton stem, pitcher, bucket, mums, Spanish tiles, all of those are going to be on sale in the shop this week. Um, also, um, last week I let you know that the collage pack that I used would be on sale and I completely forgot it. I com forgot it from the weekly email, I forgot it from the blog post, and somebody let me know I've added it and I'm going to keep that on sale this week as well. So if you still want that collage pack, um, 
And I will mention that in the weekly email as, as well, so that if you tried to get it and it wasn't there, um, it is now, uh, you know, available and it's marked down and all those kinds of things. So I apologize for that. <clears throat> it was a busy, crazy week last week, and there were several things that I messed up in my weekly email that I will be correcting this week. So um, this piece, so let me... Um, so I am reading some really, really great books right now. And last week I talked about one of the books that I'm reading called The Gift. And what a powerful, moving um, quote that I shared last week. And this week <clears throat> I'm also reading another book called Exponential Living by Sherry Riley. And um, it's just talking about... Um, spending time on who you are and this is just this is when I I read I read 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 all the time and it's always a place where I get inspiration and it can be books it can be novels it can be poetry it can be all kinds of things um, but one of the let me find the thing that inspired me and this is going to be super simple um, she says Happy is a choice. Joy is a lifestyle. Happy is a choice. Joy is a lifestyle. And it's a whole chapter of that. Um, let me go to... Let me get there. Sorry. I just kind of turned on the camera. Um, and the quote, is, the quote that she has is, Be thankful for what you have. You'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never have enough. And that, was by, that quote's by Oprah Winfrey. But um, joy is, she says that joy and happiness is the fuel of exponential living. And I won't go into detail, but just those words, happy is a choice, joy is a lifestyle. Um, and... I know this doesn't necessarily, I don't have happy on here, I don't have any of that. But when I was, when I said, when I started thinking about happy is a choice, joy is a lifestyle. And I was thinking about what I was, I'm like, I knew that I wanted to use that in my painting this week. And I, I went round and round trying to figure out what would, where I would go with that. And then I sat with it and I asked myself, Sean, what makes you have what will make you happy right now what will give you joy right now and um, I knew that this because I, I was wanting to tr try and get some really good backgrounds I was really wanting to do um, a f light coming from the front the light source coming from the front and working on my shading this way there was a lot of things in this piece <clears throat> that I wanted to try I got new pastels and they're perfect for these colors and I had this whole vision for this piece and I just didn't know where it would fit and when I asked myself what would give me joy right now this is it and that's that's the pure and simple message for this Sunday too often we have so many um, rules for ourselves we have so many lists to do we have so many things um, and especially right now when there's lots of lots of outside forces with negative things and it can be a dark and gloomy sky all the time. But I want you to ask yourself today, just today, what will make you happy right now in this moment? What will give you joy right now today? What is that? It could be one thing. It could be many things. Maybe it's a nap. Maybe it's creating. Maybe it's getting out a supply that you haven't tried and you've been wanting to try and you've been afraid. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's getting on the treadmill. Maybe what will give you joy right now? M writing, reading, resting, whatever it is. What will give you joy right now? And in that process of allowing ourselves to have that joy because so often I think I know I do I think I feel guilty like I'm not doing enough and I don't allow myself the time to feel that joy to do exactly 
what I want to do, especially as women. And I know there are men that watch this, but women are natural nurturers and we kind of take care of things. Um, I know for me, I, f I will end up feeling guilty if I um, take a nap or I just do nothing. Maybe that's your joy, doing nothing. I know that's my joy a lot of the time. Um, but I just want you to ask yourself today, what will make you, what, what brings you joy and what will make you happy? And do that today. That's it. That's my message. I think if we each did that, we each found that happy place, even if it's just for a few moments, man, alive, would it change our attitudes? It changed my attitude. I felt restful. I, felt, I, I was so deep into this painting that um, I lost track of time. It felt so good. And the joy and the peace and the the happy that I feel, especially when I look at this, I'm so happy with how it looks. You guys, that will carry us. That will carry us through the things, all the things. And we have to remember to go back and ask ourselves, if not daily, because sometimes that can feel luxurious, right? It can feel excessive of asking ourselves, are we, what's our happy place today? But it's needed. But even if it's just once a week, what will bring me joy right now? And maybe, maybe we can't do all of the things that bring us joy right now because of the restrictions that we're having to deal with with COVID, but we can do something, something that will bring us joy. All right, my loves. Um, I hope that your Sunday is restful and peaceful and oh my gosh, I hope you find your happy, your joy for a few moments today and let it fill you up. All right, my loves, happy Sunday and always, always know that you are loved. <music>